So I have to admit that these are very exciting days for us and I really look forward to these lectures because we've uh, made such a significant investment in, in developing the apparatus of vector calculus. And now we're just harvesting, we're just picking the fruit. And the results, as you will see, uh, are and will be just pouring in. And as I mentioned before, it feels like watching a movie. The results are just pouring in on their own. And we are just observers. And the apparatus, the framework, takes care of everything for us. And that's fun. So today we're just going to do uh, more of those examples. I'll begin by reviewing the quiz problem. Then we'll do a little bit of a formal analysis. We're using lots of rules for differentiation that we haven't justified. This is a math class. We should justify those rules at least a little bit. And then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about a very nice analysis. Uh, talking about a very nice, what, what should I call it? It's not a specific problem. A very nice set of relationships from differential geometry. And throughout I will try to emphasize the interaction between the intuitive approach and the approach that we've developed and maybe the benefits of both. So let me begin by reviewing the quiz problem that you just did. And the problem was given a point and a curve, maybe it's a closed curve so we don't have to deal with the edge cases, find the point that's Find the point on the curve that's closest to this point and find the point on the curve that's furthest away. And by find, we mean find a geometric description of it. Characterize it. What's the characterization that uniquely defines it? And intuitively, I believe it's clear what it is, but let's pretend that it's not and let's discover it. And then again, and this is this conflict between do you go the intuitive route or do you go the analytic route. So let's begin here by going the analytic route and to say that we've introduced the parameter on this curve alpha and that now this curve, the position vector that points to the point of, that points to the points on the curve is now a function of alpha so it's now become not just a geometric object but a function that we can differentiate. And what we're trying to minimize is the length, or maximize, I'll just say minimize. Uh, minimizing is closer to my heart, because in physics, energy, you, you minimize energy. So I, I, I tend to say minimize, even though I mean minimize, maximize, or find the point of inflection. So all of those are one family as far as this first order analysis is concerned. Okay, and just might as well make this comment now, locally minimize. We're looking for local minima and local maxima. And you will see that even for this curve, there appear to be at least two local minima. One right around here, and then one right around here. I think, makes sense, doesn't it, intuitively? Okay, so we're going to minimize the length of this vector might as well minimize the length squared of this vector. So the length, I'll denote it by d. That's the length. The length squared is r of alpha dotted with itself. Of course, the dot product, what else can it be if you're going to use derivatives? All right? And now we'll do, well, the only thing we can do, which is take the derivative. And, and that, of course, works for us because that's how you find minima, by differentiating the function and setting the derivative to zero. So we don't like square roots unless we need them. There's no difference between minimizing the distance or the distance squared, because x squared is a monotonic function of x, so it doesn't matter which one we're minimizing. So we'll stick with the square, uh, which will help us avoid square roots. So we're just going to take the derivative of both sides, use the product rule here, which we have not yet justified, but we will. And as we know already, we'll have two identical terms, even though I could have dropped alpha because we're not going to take another derivative. 
When you're not taking the derivative, you can drop the functional argument, but I'll leave it in. And this must equal zero. The question is, is it zero the vector or zero the number? Number, dot product, number, correct. Equals zero, that's the, that's the final answer. That's the analytical result. The dot product of r with its derivative equals zero. That's where the story would have ended if this problem did not come from geometry, but it did. So we owe it to ourselves to now look back on our problem and interpret this answer geometrically. And we know that r prime of alpha points in the tangential direction. So I just drew the direction. I don't know which way it points because that depends on whether we chose alpha to go counterclockwise or clockwise. The direction will change. And so what this says is that the position vector is orthogonal to its derivative. In other words, the position vector is orthogonal to the tangent. And so in this, so we have to find a point, and I guess that'll be the point right here, where the position vector is orthogonal to the tangent. And that's the geometric characterization of minima, maxima, and all the points of inflection, local minima. If this was an infinite curve, we wouldn't have a maximum. If this wasn't a closed curve, then the minimum might occur at the edges, and the maximum might occur, or a maximum, might occur at the edges. So that's why I chose a closed curve, so we wouldn't have to deal with that. And so now, we've come back to something that makes perfect intuitive sense. And you might wonder, well, shouldn't we have started there? Number one, it's kind of intuitively clear that these points, I guess this would be furthest away. It happens where the position vector is orthogonal to the tangent. And actually, instead of saying orthogonal to the tangent of the curve, we just say orthogonal to the curve. That's what it means to be orthogonal to a curve. And we don't usually think of curves as forming angles, but they do. And you just have to replace the curve with its tangent to have a nice and clean angle. So we'll just say orthogonal to the curve. I lost my train of thought, so I guess I'm, I'm saying that right now what I'm saying is that what we got made intuitive sense. But you might also say, I wouldn't necessarily be one of those people, but I think at your age I would have said that this is a little bit dry. Wouldn't it be better and much more insightful and much more intuitive to analyze this on a geometric level and derive this geometrically. Like how would you prove, yes it's intuitively clear, but can you make an argument, some kind of geometric argument, not analytic, geometric argument that would show that the closed point is indeed characterized by the fact that the position vector is orthogonal to the tangent line? And the answer is yes you can, and it would be something like this. Let's take this curve and let's look at the point where the minimum occurs and let's zoom in far enough that the curve can be considered to be almost straight. In fact, straight, whatever you want, straight or almost straight, I'll make it essentially straight. And here is the point and here is, let's now, I'm not now saying that what I'm about to draw is the smallest distance. What I'm drawing right now is the line orthogonal to the curve. And now I will prove that it's actually the shortest distance. Well, let's consider any other neighboring point, such as this one. Okay, and let's connect it to our given point. And can we say that this is shortest and this is longer? Well, from this picture, of course we can because this is a right triangle, and of course hypotenuse by the Pythagorean theorem is the longest side. So whatever this distance is, the distance to any other neighboring point, this is local analysis, the distance to any other neighboring point is longer, essentially by the Pythagorean theorem. So this relies on looking closely enough that the curve appears straight 
if the curve does not appear, if we haven't zoomed in closely enough, then you have to be a little bit more careful with the argument, right? Because you could say, yes, the hypotenuse is longer, but it's, there is this, but it's this much closer. So it's not 100% convincing, if you ask me. But if you do do infinitesimal analysis and zoom in far enough that the, straight, that the curve appears as a straight line, then this argument makes sense. And so it's intuitive. That's why it's orthogonal. It's, this is an argument that certainly would work for a straight line, but for a curve, you rely on infinitesimal arguments. And so you could say, well, this is much better because it makes intuitive sense. I understand that if I'm here, if I just get a little bit closer, then from the right triangle, it's clear that it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to be as small as possible and then starts growing again. So I love, I love that, you could say, because it makes intuitive sense. And if this was a YouTube video that said, you know, an intuitive explanation for why the point that's closest to a given point is, has this property, and gave this argument, right, it would be a very nice video. Everybody will say, well, finally, I understand why this is happening. Finally, I have an intuitive argument that explains it. All my professor did in class was write down equations that, yes, they show that, but gave us no intuition. So that's, I think, how I would have felt earlier in my career. But I've since changed. I certainly consider one's ability to make these intuitive geometric arguments to be a great art. There's great insight. It's good to be able to make these arguments. But now, and it's my personal aesthetic preference, I consider it to be an even higher art, and in my book, the highest art, to be able to construct an analytic framework where all of the results follow from as few principles as possible by strict algebraic rules. And that's what this achieves, and that's the beauty of this. I don't know. <laughs> How does this apply to the maximum? Because with hypotenuse and catheters, it only works for a minimum. I haven't even thought about it. I, I was thinking about it as I was talking. So I don't know. I was hoping nobody would ask that question or kick my camera. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to think about it. Think about it. 